Hi everyone, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. We're back this week with another AWS Basics video, which is on device shadows. So what is a device shadow? When would you use it over publish subscribe? And how do you create and connect to a shadow? This relies heavily on the IoT Core video. So if you don't know what IoT Core is, or you don't know what publish and subscribe are, I'd encourage you to uh, check that video out first. So what is a shadow? Shadow is a, a new way of messaging. So instead of publish and subscribe, like you would do with a standard IoT core connection, a shadow is a shared JSON document between two endpoints, usually the cloud and an edge device. If either side writes into this shadow document, that update is then received by the other side. And that way you have synchronized communication. Let's take a look at some diagrams to help explain this a bit better. So this is what I was just describing. Here, AWS can write into the shadow and receive updates from it. And a smart light bulb can also write into the shadow and receive updates from it. Shadows come in two flavors. You can either have the unnamed or classic shadows, like on the last picture, or you can have named shadows where multiple shadows per device are available, and each shadow can have a different name to help namespace them. So this light bulb can have a state shadow and a configuration shadow, each with a different purpose. So to understand how to use a shadow, we need to understand that it's made up of different sections. The structure of a shadow is broadly broken down into state and metadata. The important part here is the state section, which has desired and reported sections. AWS can write into the desired state that it wants the light bulb to turn on. That's then synchronized with the light bulb, which can then turn on. The other part of the state object is the reported section, which is how a device reports its actual state. It's now turned on, so it's going to change its reported state in the shadow to on, which is also synchronized back up to the cloud. Using this, we can emulate a kind of request response system. And we also get the state of the light bulb available at any time. So any application that you spin up in AWS, like a Lambda function, can read the latest shadow and see that the light bulb is on without having to listen on a topic that it's subscribed to to find out what state the bulb is in. One advantage of shadows over publish and subscribe is that it's persistent meaning that if you write into the shadow, you don't need something on the other side to receive it. In this instance, the light bulb doesn't have power, so nothing is reading the shadow, so that's not transmitted. Now, if this was published subscribe and AWS transmitted a message to say turn on and the light bulb wasn't powered, that message would just be missed. But in this case, when the light bulb turns on, it receives power again. It can read that latest shadow and see that it's got a desired status of on, so it can turn on and report that back to the cloud. So that's what a shadow is and a broad breakdown of how it's structured. But when would we use one over publish and subscribe? Well, as I said, the biggest advantage is that it's persistent. So you would use this for things uh, where you don't want to miss the data, like responding to commands or reporting device status, or tracking configuration for a device. However, publish and subscribe is still better for reporting sensor readings. So if you have a stream of data and it doesn't matter if you miss some values, it's still better to use publish and subscribe. You could use a shadow, but there's an advantage to using publish and subscribe, which is that you can view a, a collection of devices at the same time, like a facility and you can get a better overview of what's being produced. Let's say you have a facility which has sensor readings of temperature and humidity and a number of other things. You can get a better idea of what that facility is doing as a whole by using publish and subscribe with well-structured topics. You could even subscribe to just temperature data using a wildcard in the subscription, as opposed to subscribing to every single shadow and taking out the temperature information from within that shadow. So shadows are good for device status, command and control, and configuration. Publish and subscribe is better for all other IoT applications, especially streaming sensor data. 
Let's look now at how we, how we would create a shadow and interact with it. And for that, we'll be going back into the IoT core console. So here we are, we can take a look at the things available. And we've got one thing available, the light bulb, which is what we used in the last demonstration. Now there's two ways to create a shadow. The first is that we can attach one to an existing thing. And the second is that we can create one along with a new thing. So let's attach one to the existing thing first. We access our light bulb, take a look at the device shadows and see that there are none available. So let's create one. This time I'll use an unnamed shadow just for simplicity and we can click create on that. And now our shadow has been created. If we take a look inside, this is the default shadow that appears, the default shadow document. It's got a desired welcome message which matches its reported welcome message. That's in the state object. We've also got the metadata object which uh, contains timestamps of when the field was last updated. So the desired welcome field was last updated at this timestamp. If we edit the document, we can set the welcome desired message to something else like Mike likes robots. And when we update that, we see that the desired field has updated, the reported field hasn't updated, and we have a new section, which is the delta section. This is calculated automatically by AWS IoT and basically contains the differences between the desired and the reported sections. So you could, if you wanted, just watch the del delta section to see if something is different between the two sections so that you can correct it, rather than reading both the desired and the reported field to decide what to do. Now, if we want to create a thing for a, uh, create a shadow for a new thing, we'll go to create things. Let's call it light bulb two. And then in this device shadow section that I skipped over last time, we can create a shadow. We could use unnamed. I'll use named to show the other side of it. And let's give it a name like configuration. Now with this option, we get the option to edit the default shadow. So we can take out this welcome message because we don't need it. Click next, auto generate a new certificate as normal. And here the policy is important again. Now the policy we're using is allow all, which is the most permissive policy. It's all actions available for all resources. This is just so that I can demo things without having to worry about permissions. But in a real use case, you would want to have a more restrictive policy. And for that, you need to know what policies a shadow requires to be able to interact with it. For that, I'll link the AWS documentation in the description. For now, this is fine. So we'll select allow all and create thing. We'll download these keys because it won't let us continue until we do that, even though we're not planning to use them. And then we'll go to the device shadow we just created. Here we are, configuration. And it's completely empty because we created it with no state. So that's how we can create a shadow. Now let's look at how to connect and edit it. So here we are again in the EC2 instance that I'm using pretend to pretend to be an IoT device. And again, we're using this repository that contains samples. This is the AWS IoT uh, device SDK in Python, and it has a folder full of scripts in this samples folder. Excuse me. Last time we used this pubsub.py script, and this time we'll use the shadow.py script to interact with the shadow. So let's see what parameters it needs. And we can see that it needs the endpoint, the key, and the certificate, which are the same as in the pubsub script. And it also needs the thing name, which in this case is light bulb. So here's a command that I've written earlier. Let's execute this. And we can see it, it's successfully connected. And it's read that the color property is missing from the shadow. So it set that. 
And now if we access the shadow of the light bulb, we can see this new field has appeared, which is color off. Now what the script is doing is reading for changes in the desired field and then updating the reported field. So if we edit this document and set the color to red, we immediately see that the reported color has also turned to red. And we can see for the sample script that it detected a shadow delta event, meaning that something changed between desired and reported, realized that the desired value was red and changed the reported value to red. Now what the script can also do is update the desired field from the device side. So let's set it to blue in this. And we can see that it changed the desired field and the reported field to blue using the log and using the browser. One more thing to talk about with this sample script is that it shows the kind of events that we can subscribe to for a shadow. So just after we've successfully connected, we can see these subscribing lines. There's the update responses, which is any time the shadow is updated, it calls your callback function. The get responses, which is if you request the shadow document, so you get the shadow document, then it will call your callback function with the shadow document. And delta events, where any time the delta field is changed, so new fields added, fields disappeared because they're now synchronized properly or a value has changed, those events will be reported to that callback function. And these three mechanisms allow you to see the shadow document in its current state, updates the shadow document, and changes between the desired and reported sections of the shadow document. If you'd like to have a deeper dive into how to interact with the device shadow, then please do have a look at the GitHub repository. I'll link it in the description and have a play for yourself. Create a thing, create a shadow, and see if you can edit it in the console and through the script and even through the CLI. So with that, we can summarize by saying the shadow is great for keeping persistent data, such as device status, command and configuration, uh, command and control and configuration and publish and subscribe is better for other operations, including streaming sensor readings. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of AWS IoT and shadows, and I'll see you in the next one.